Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, always free and available on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts. And today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet and you're going to get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. So visit FanDuel.com to get started. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan. Chris, great to be back with you for some bonus time. Matador Mob Insider mailbag appreciate those who are chopping it up with us inside the matador mob and thanks for sending in some questions once again got quite a few to get to here today so let's get rolling i thought this was a fairly interesting question to start with uh chris because this is historically something that i've had a tough time (laughs) kind of dealing with as a fan uh but we had a question about who outside of texas tech you may be pulling for, whether it's in the Big 12 Conference or beyond, is there anybody that you find yourself (laughs) week to week rooting for? Is that even possible for a Texas Tech fan? So this is like an every year deal, or is this like in your current circumstance? I think current circumstance. Or is that two different? Well, current circumstance, I mean, right now I'm rooting for Cincinnati, Arizona State, and Arizona the rest of the way. Um, And I'm rooting for every team that's undefeated. Sure. And every team that I that's got an undefeated conference record right now, I'm rooting for the other team that's playing them. I mean, like like this this weekend, for example, um, let's just play it out that way. I mean, this weekend, I'm an Arizona fan. I am a Cincinnati fan. I'm an Arizona State fan. I think you need to be a West Virginia fan. And then I think Kansas State, Colorado, I'm, you know, somebody's taking an L there. Uh, so uh, I, I think you get where I'm going, but that that's really that's really the way I'm going to approach this. Um, I think there are teams that, uh, you, you know, you kind of gravitate to, maybe it's the coach or somebody that doesn't bother you. And so it's like, eh, okay. I mean, I'm not rooting for TCU really ever. I mean, I'm just, I'm <laughs> right. sorry. Uh, you know, gu- gu- guilty as charged, sir. Uh, frogs down or whatever it would be. Um, <laughs> I mean, I like some of the people there, uh, whatever, but that's just uh, – there's a lot of animosity and, and dislike and distaste between fan bases and all those kinds of things. Um, like, th- the contrary, I thought Kenny Dillingham was an extremely uh, likable guy. He was very complimentary about your situation, your fan base. I love the what, what he said before the game, leading up to it, after the game – I mean, I I, I got to tell you, I'll be kind of rooting for Arizona State from afar just because I thought he was um, – I had a much – it seemed like, like a much better experience with Arizona State in their, their whole situation compared to Arizona. So, mm. uh, I, you know, I, I have a hard time rooting for BYU based on kind of how that went last year. Um, but, yeah, so that – I keep going, but you get you get the idea. I think I, I will localize this, and if you're asking me if there's anybody out there I'm rooting for, I'm rooting for the teams that are playing the team at the top of the standings that you're sharing them with, and then I'm going to root for everybody that you've already beaten because that only enhances your situation. So, so to sum it up, those teams, and it could change every week. I like it. I like it. It still ties back to Red Raider interest first. <laughs> those who are helping our resume and those who are maybe helping us as far as battling some of those other peers at the top of the league standings. That question was from uh, Charles. Appreciate that question, Charles. And I'm just going to copy off of Chris's homework and say the same thing. Uh, if, the, if the Aggies or the Longhorns were like playing Iraq, I, I'd root for Iraq. I don't know when I could ever find myself pulling for them. Uh, but as far as those who are helping bolster the interest of Texas Tech, Maybe I could pull for some of those. All right, appreciate that question there, Charles. This yeah, one, yeah, when like when OU and Texas play or A and M and Texas play, I used to when I grew up, I used to say, "Man, I wish the ball would just go flat and everybody have to go home with a tie." Right, the locks like, would go like, out. Yeah, nobody gets to score. Everybody's mad, frustrated, angry. Uh, yeah, blah blah blah. And so, yeah, that deal. But yeah, so I hope yeah. all the candy apples are giving everybody the <laughs> runs. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> all right, thank you, Charles. This one from Grant uh, talking about things in the trenches uh, for Texas Tech. I'm sorry, Donald, I skipped ahead. We'll get to you in just a second, Grant. This one from Donald. Offensive line or defensive line, Chris? Which one do you think has the most upside the remainder of the season? Which one has the uh, most room possibly, realistically, uh, to see some improvement from? 
defensive line because there's a lot more pieces at play. There's there there's a lot. Um, I mean, think about it. You haven't really seen. Uh, first of all, the offensive line. It's like by almost by default here because your your best maybe player is not available for the rest of the year, and you 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 don't even know if you've got a seventh or eighth or ninth guy that you're sure about. You darn sure have that, and then some. Even with some guys injured on the defensive line, and uh, I think th- there's more help on the way. I don't know if your offensive line like depth is ready to help you right now from the young pieces. You, you, you make follow me. Uh, yeah. I hope I'm making sense, but I, I just like, we haven't even seen a ton of esters yet. He's been pretty good in the glimpses that we've seen. I mean, Harvey Dyson, kind of same thing. Uh, you know, you, you, you play a game without Isaac Smith and Amir Washington. What happens when you get all these guys available? And I think that's where your upside comes in. So I don't even think that that's a close, uh, you know, that's not even a tough call, I guess I should say. Yeah. That, that, that's not even a, a, a close decision uh, for me to make. I think the defensive line by a landslide as as asked in that in that way, I guess. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that question, Donald. And yeah, you didn't hesitate to go uh, to the defensive side of things. So we'll be interested, hopefully, to see some of that uh, come to fruition as the season rolls on. Now back to Grant, uh, who asked this question as it relates to the recruiting trail. Uh, saying things are rolling fairly well right now in terms of on-field success. How much bearing do you think it has on immediate recruiting gains? This is always something that I think every fan is considering. Like, do these things pay off, you know, further down the road? Is there some uh, benefit to find immediately? You've covered the recruiting trail for a long, long time. So historically, what do you see? Do you think it takes longer to pay off or do you see some things immediate? By you winning right now? Yeah. Yeah. It's not uh, winning or losing. A lot of the time, it doesn't it doesn't factor in as much as you think. I think coaching changes, potential coaching changes, that stuff factors in. I think now the the, the recruiting trail or the landscape there has changed so much because of NIL. Now, because of the house settlement and what all that looks like. Uh, I think it still boils down to relationship with with head coach, position coach, coordinator, and scheme. Um, I mean, you you got the facilities box checked times ten. I mean, by the time your stuff is done, like the football player at Texas Tech it is amongst the top ten percent of what's out there in the country, as far as just football facilities and what they would dabble in, from nutrition to training to just everyday life uh, as a football player and then stadium and all that stuff. Uh, so that probably used to factor in quite a bit more than it would now, but that, that that's just the reality of where you're at now. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it certainly factors in. It's not that, uh, you know, you certainly don't want to be one in five and out there going, Hey, you'd like to come play for us. <laughs> no, I mean, five, five and one is certainly better. You can maybe get a few more, calls back you can maybe get in a few more doors um you know all all kinds of things so it it, it absolutely helps it's just sometimes it's not going to be the decider on yes i'm coming there or i'm going to go there kind of deal um yeah and and they could come they could show up for a monster game and you win it and you're thinking dude their commitments are about to start rolling in i mean in in that you know or or you could lose just depends on how you spend it too like you, 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 they show up for a big recruiting weekend and you lose that game and be like, hey, man, you go in the next morning thinking th- th- none of these guys are going to want to play for us. Well, no, you look at them in the eye and go, son, if you come here, we win that game because of you. Yeah. Like you're the missing piece. <laughs> like you, you, you are the one that can take us across the finish line. And this is why we have you here this weekend uh, because we, we need people like you, your teammate that uh, sitting in that room, he's about to come in here and talk to me. We got to have you guys. I mean, we're, we are this close. You saw it, you know, for your, I mean, it's all about how you spin it and pitch it and, and all those things. So, uh, but uh, yeah, there, there's some immediate impact, but not as much as one would think. Okay. Um, thanks for that question. Grant. Trisha asks this question: Why did we see Cowboy Coy uh, returning punts last time around? This answer may be obvious. I don't know, but why did we see that, Chris? 
First, today's episode brought to you by FanDuel. And NFL fans, you can start this season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Say you're watching a game, you get hit with a hunch, an instinctual calling. Well, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you're going to place your bets to keep up with everything going down in real time as you submit that slip. And right now, FanDuel is going to get you started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's right, $200 in bonus bets guaranteed with only a $5 bet out the gate at FanDuel.com. Trisha asks this question, why did we see Cowboy Coy uh, returning punts last time around? This answer may be obvious. I don't know, but <laughs> why did we see that, Chris? I think it's because Josh Kelly was gimpy. I think it's because he's kind of limping around a little bit. I think you try to protect him uh, some and, and and take a little off his plate. Uh, I think um, – and, and so I not think, fumble related. Maybe nope. it's not as obvious as I thought it was. Yeah, not not at all. I don't think. And I think that fumble versus Cincinnati. I guess it was. Uh, is that right? It was the Cincinnati or Arizona State. Don't give me One the line. Don't yeah, me that's the right. Line. It all it's all blurred <laughs> together. Uh, but the 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 last fumble that he had on the punt return, that was friendly fire. I mean, he yeah. kind of is cutting around, and he's got a teammate that kind of you know, got in his way or got in the, in the periphery there. And, and that's was, so, you know, partly Josh's fault. Sure. But then partly his teammates fault that are, they're trained not to be in, in close proximity or get out of the way or, or those kinds of things. But, uh, but no, this was, I think, I think very much just trying to lighten his load a little bit and not put any extra on him when he's dealing with what I'm going to assume his ankle or whatever was on the injury report two or three weeks ago. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that ties into this question then. And thanks for that one, Tricia. This one from Andrew. Uh, have either one of you heard anything on the status of Quincy Ledette? Went out Saturday fairly early, didn't return, didn't hear a word about it. Also, Josh Kelly was gimpy, but played through it, sort of. <laughs> Wondering about him too. Josh Kelly, the week off for him will be great. Uh, I think, you know, for Joey not to really mention that in his last media availability is probably a good sign. Uh, I, I just don't think there'll be any issue there. He, he played through it all. He just was far less than 100%. It's just sore. It, it, that, that's the way I view it and and look at it. Uh, I think Quincy Ledette, he was uh, so good that he was able to break down his interception and interception return and this hurdle uh, with the <laughs> Texas Tech video folks. So I'm going to assume that he's – He's a okay. Otherwise, he'd be uh, he wouldn't be doing uh, things like that. I think he'll be just fine. I think it was just really hot. He was gassed. Uh, I think there was, you know, he he had done a he had done yeoman's like work for most of that night. Uh, you know, holding it down in the interior of that defensive line. But no, I think he's going to be okay. So I think I think you'll be okay with the the two guys you just asked for. But you know, okay. again, we'll see. Okay, thanks for that question, Andrew. Brian asks, is candy corn the worst candy ever? Yeah, we do celebrate uh, Candy Corn Hate Month, and we are in the midst of October, and shout out to all those who do celebrate. Uh, <laughs> the only thing that's worse are those pumpkin candy corn thingies, uh, <laughs> but it's all waxed, crap, trash. Okay, It's a, it's a bottom tier. Uh, the, the only thing that, that drives me nuts worse, uh, and that's pretty it, – it, two things. One – Hey man, if you did, did you know if you put candy corn and some peanuts together, it tastes like a payday? Yeah, I've only been told that five hundred million times. Uh, the second thing is, is when somebody shoves coconut into something that was otherwise just otherworldly, and you put coconut in it, and I, I'm crunching on something weird, and then it becomes just trash candy corn like. So that that's where I'm at on uh, on on candy corn, candy corn pumpkins, whatever you want to call them, and then I'll just I'm just. The, the, the coconut take, it was just for free. That that one was just, uh, I just offered that one up on its own. Appreciate that. Yeah. <laughs> you get your money's worth in the first 30 I, seconds to the answer, the rest of it's free. <laughs> and I will say, I will say when I was uh, playing for the strikers, uh, like when I was seven years old as a soccer yeah. player, and you you, you won, and, and it's like the one dad wants to take the whole team over to the snow cone stand way back when, you know, you have the the purple sugary syrup, which is grape. You have the red, which is more than likely cherry. But inevitably, there was always like the blue. And that was called coconut. I will tell you, 
I always thought the blue or what they call coconut was always the best taste in one of the snow cone syrups oh. in the little, yeah, but that's not what coconut tastes like. Uh, so, um, and, and, and the consistency in the snow cone blue syrup and ice is, is nothing like the crunchy that an Almond Joy makes or some crap, you know, coconut uh, deal that we've got going on. So I just wanted to throw that in again, more, uh, more coconut takes here every week. Uh, I didn't know you were sitting on a pile of coconut ammunition, <laughs> ready to spray, baby. That's right. Man, that's right. That's a nice little surprise. And I think sure. I'm agreeing with you on that. Um, Jace asks this super easy question. What's y'all's realistic expectations for the remainder of the season? Do we win out until the playoff? Do we lose a game on the road at home? Do we see ourselves making the Big 12 title game, possibly a playoff? If we could realistically see ourselves making a playoff game, are we fit to compete with the big boys, as some may refer to the SEC schools as? Should I just say who the f knows and move on, or do you want to take a stab at any of that? <laughs> a lot of this is going to depend on health, uh, you know, and, and like, you know, what team you're taking into these games each week, okay? Right. Uh, I, I I would say this though, and I and I kind of gave you a similar answer the other day. If you can go two and one over your next three games, whatever that looks like, whatever that looks like, combo it up however you want. Two and one over the next three games, you you can at this point. I do think at that point you could win out uh, like regular season. Um. And, and I do think if you were to go two and one, you would be in a really, really good spot to hold mm. serve and make it to Arlington. I just don't know if you can survive two losses and feel great about things. And like with everything jumbled up, this is why I say earlier in this episode, you need you need the teams that are have undefeated conference records that start taking some L's. It just increases your margin for error. It's also why you need the teams that you beat to go wreck and shop with everybody else. Yeah. That's just how this needs to work. Uh, but uh, I, again, one loss, I think, I think you make it two losses. I don't know. Uh, three losses. I think that you're probably out. So theoretically, Cowan, you know, you're not there yet. But once you get your first loss, okay, in conference, if you get it, that's when the playoffs start for you. I mean, just look gotcha, at it that yeah. way. It's like let's just uh, – we're not going to wait till December the 20th or whatever, wait for this committee to tell us uh, who's in the playoffs. No, your playoff at that point would begin at that, you know, uh, whenever that is. So Yeah. Okay, thanks for that question, Jace. Uh, from Bruce. Asking about bye week differences for a team meeting expectations versus team not meeting expectations. Is there a difference? Uh, you see uh, those days treated differently by uh, either Joey McGuire or some previous staffs whenever a team is living up to something versus not? Well, like l let's look at it from like say how you would treat this versus say how like Baylor, Oklahoma State are treating this. They may be experimenting, trying to keep motivation up, maybe thinking about uh, coaching changes, play, play caller change, position change, um, quarterback change. I don't know, like searching for answers, okay? Yeah. And, and then also probably embracing the mental break because of how much frustration they've been dealing with and then trying to stay motivated and, and, and all those things. You, on the other hand, you're saying, okay, the same mental break, we need it, let's embrace it, but now we have to keep our edge. We have to stay sharp. We have to stay very angry and motivated as well for different reasons because now we've got a bit of a bullseye. We've got a bit of a uh, can we keep it going. We're going to battle handling success is our biggest problem. We're going to battle consistency is our biggest problem. We're going to battle – you know, but you're probably not experimenting, you, you know, a lot more fun on one side of it than the other, for sure. <laughs> no um, doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, because there's rumors in Stillwater about a QB change. There's rumors about maybe switching the play caller. I mean, what yeah. if this is just what happens when you when you fall short. Um, and then we already know Dave Aranda's uh, on the hot seat or warm seat or whatever, and you're sitting here going, we, we've got to figure out a way to keep our edge about us and stay – sharp and angry and motivated and, and play with that chip on our shoulder uh and all that and that is a real task um that sure. that's a real thing and and handling success is one of the hardest things in sports you yeah, know you, no you, doubt. you you sit around and everybody's patting you on the back telling you this and that but it's it's hard for the guy to show up po'd every day uh and like you know for greatness and and like want to achieve that repeatedly and all those things that's why 
the undefeated seasons are the great seasons for teams who are far, few and far between in most cases. Yeah, I think you've heard some of the greatest coaches of all time. Uh, I know I've heard Bill Belichick say this, like uh, finding success the first time is easy compared to maintaining success as you roll through season after season after season. Uh, but you'd love to be in that spot facing that challenge. Uh, well, thank you for that question, Bruce. We'll combine these two questions from uh, Mark and Blaine. The gist of it is, and I could just say, refer to previous comments on a previous episode. We're going to see Micah Hudson more in the second half of this regular season. Is he making progress? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I mean, obviously the big chunk play that he had the other day uh, against Arizona was was progress. I, I, I think what you're seeing is it, it's a handful of plays each week. I think Joey has said in, in a recent media availability because he was using the example with like a Devin Cromwell. Like we're committed to getting Devin Cromwell in for so many series or every third or fourth series. Like this is what we're committed to doing. And I think they'll, they'll, you'll start to see that with Micah Hudson uh, as well continuing. Gotcha. Uh, you know, they, they've already opted to play him, you know, right? He's not redshirting. And so you want to, you know, and then and then you have to see, you know, injury-wise what is around them and how does that factor in? Because that could speed it up or slow it down uh, based on who is uh, healthy and available uh, in front of them, around them, you know, and all, all those kinds of things at, at their respective positions. Thank you, Mark and Blaine, for those questions. And thank you to all of you for mixing it up with us inside the Matador Mob. Appreciate each and every mobster, whether you submitted a question or not. Keep them coming, and we'll keep firing away here on the Matador Mob mailbag. Chris, thanks for some bonus time today, man. Appreciate it. Love you all. Appreciate the questions, people. Um, yeah, two thumbs down to Coconut. I continue to rank candy corn with zero stars. Uh, <laughs> and I uh, hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful rest of the week slash weekend or uh, all, all of those things. So we'll talk to uh, you next time. Get subscribed on YouTube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode. Special shout out to the everydayers out there, even when it's twice a day that you're kicking it with us on Locked on Texas Tech. Thank you for being out there. Appreciate the time. For Chris, I'm Casey, and we hope to see you back for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.